What's up? Back. I'm back. Here we go. We have a, a great guest on. Oh, oh, oh you're, you're echoing again, I guess. I think we're going to have to buy you a new mic. <laughs> Uh, let's, see, let's see when that can get into the budget. Yeah, yeah. well, I, maybe I'll just send you one. They're not I, actually. I might. Maybe I'll send you. To, I have a couple, I don't do that anymore. That would be good. That would be a bonus. That could help. Or, or there could be something that you have on your settings that I'm not sure. You, you know, I would have to look at your computer. Uh, uh, like sometimes. It could be your what you have setting wise is input and output and stuff. So, um, but without seeing your side, I can't. <laughs> I couldn't tell you. Uh, so we got a great guest on today. We're gonna have Tariq Holman, Tariq Holman from St. Thomas Aquinas, who is the head coach. There to be a second year there. They had a lot of success last year. Um, uh, the pro program's a pro uh, a, a smaller parochial program, but on, on the rise and and really. Um, uh, starting to get a lot of good players and and gaining traction and and he has obviously uh, a great path not just up from a coaching standpoint but he was division one player uh at penn state right and and uh really had that uh experience uh being a big time recruit so we'll get to talk to him about that which would be really great um and and what it, kind of his process was many moons ago and how 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 maybe that's changed over the years um i think also talking to him going from i think he was uh mostly a public school coach until going to st thomas aquinas so that's probably uh um a little a little different change um we'll find out you know from him if it is and um talk more about that but he has great talk experience uh, you know, he, he he's uh, one of the leaders in the state from a coaching standpoint. Um, and, uh, you know, it would be great to talk to him, uh, not just about football, but, you know, kind of how he approaches everything. Yeah, uh, Coach has been around. I've known Coach for, uh, you know, a couple of years now since going back to North Jersey days when he was at Randolph High School. Uh, been at a couple different spots. Um, always been successful in terms of whatever teams that he's been a part of. Uh, like you said, coming from a you know a lot of tradition in Randolph High School to, to uh, play the University of uh, I think we may have lost Coach D. Um technical difficulties for him but yeah so um you know coach d's known him for a long time you know we're excited to talk to to, to coach uh when he gets on some really so the, for those of you who have not or who have fallen off the cliff on this standpoint last night we did have uh i saw a lot of stuff going doing the rounds because obviously the jets had a preseason game if you're out here in new jersey but a lot of you know the everything is kind of kicked off which is really cool, and and the hard knocks is going. So I got to watch that first episode. I saw some some great stuff, so I I'm, I'm excited to watch that. Um, college football's not too far away. I think three weeks before we start games, high school probably pretty much the same thing. So it's going to be pretty exciting uh, season, especially interesting to see with NIL and transfer portal how this has really affected a lot of teams. We'll get to see. Uh, the effects, good, bad, and ugly, of all of those different things from a uh, a standpoint of oh, uh, Coach D on the call. Are, are you on the phone? Yeah, you know, no, the connection issues messed up, but he just texted me and said his hot water heater blue, so he's not even gonna be able to come on. So, can you come on just from your from your face? Yeah, yeah, cool. All right. So, um, so yeah, so, so it would be really interesting to see. I had to how about that? That's the first time taking a call, uh, on the call. Uh, we're gonna really see, uh, uh, and unfortunately, I just found we just found out to Rick Holman is not gonna be able to be on the show, so that's uh, a little bit of a bummer. Um, but we'll carry on and, uh, I guess edit that 
edit it to what we are going to be talking about, which we're going to talk a lot of college football here. Talk about what you need to be really doing to prepare yourself. And while you are myfootballcamps.com slash D1 promo, make sure you check it out. Um, uh, you know, and, and really um, uh, get an opportunity to get yourself recruited. This D1 promo that me and Mike Farrow are doing is second to none. There's nothing like it in the world. And it is helping kids get recruited, get offers like nothing you have ever seen. Um, you know, it, it, it's this is the time right now. MyFootballCamps.com slash D1 promo. This is the time right now to get on there and really get yourself an opportunity to get recruited. It's a big, big deal. And, um, you know, check out me at CoachHuman.com. If you have questions about the D1 promo, um, DM me. This is the time. Don't wait until your season starts in 2024 because then you are going to be up. You know what's Creek, and you're going to be uh, in, in all of a sudden, oh, I, I got under-recruited. Well, here I am telling you this is your opportunity to not be under-recruited. DM me, you know, uh, at Coach Human on Twitter. Um, we just had a bunch of guys commit. You know, Griffin Egan committed to Harvard. Um our linebacker out of Florida, Cyrus Abu, just picked up his second offer now. Um, and you know, we have guys left and right that are uh, – oh, uh, Carson Rahner, quarterback, just committed to Holy Cross. So, I mean, it, it, it's just one after another. Um, and the mistake that people think is that I need 50 offers. I need I – need, no, you need a few – yeah, you need one. That's really all you need. But you need – that's what we're looking to do. Like you get some, get yourself that exposure. It's, it's going to make all the difference. It's the opportunity that you need. So check that out. I got coach D back on the cell phone. First, first time. Uh, welcome. First time caller. Uh, what a, well, listen, I guarantee you the mic action is sounds better probably. And I, it don't is, have, no? and, I and I don't have any echo. So obviously it's something to do with something connect, with your, whatever. Yeah. I mean, it's like, probably, probably settings. Like it's I said, I'm you know, as we grow and do something, I would like to like, you know what I mean? Like I have yeah, a mic like, for a you. A mic would be good. Like that stuff would be good as we grow and do. I mean, look, we kind of started this kind of just like, hey, let's work with what we got. And now like, you know, as we get a little higher level, right, maybe start to get some different types of people on. I think we can kind of grow and go like that. But it definitely sounds better. But coach, I'm glad you were mentioning the D1 promo because like you said, these guys now, like, it, this is time. The time is now, right? Like, you're starting to get into your seasons. You're going to start having more tape, whether it was or whatever. Now's the time, you know, because these college coaches, for, you know, they're worried about their seasons, but the recruiting aspect of it never stops. So that's just something that continues to grow. So, guys, don't wait too long to jump into it because I'm telling you with the, you know, the stuff that we've seen from the guys that have participated and done it, you know, once they get that first one, too, with our help, then it's just kind of just keeps continuing to go and go and go so definitely something that guys need to look at and jump on uh if they have questions like you said they can message you and kind of ask them and you'll answer them and be good to go so definitely something to look into uh, uh, there's no doubt about it um it it, it makes a it, it just makes a huge difference like it just you know i did a post I can't remember if it was Braden Kelly was the last post I did, but what whatever the last post I, I had just done, and within three hours, it was over 10,000 views. Right. And it ended up being like 20, 25,000. I mean, if you have 100 followers, you're going to get like 200 views, you know, on your thing. And they're going to be from like grandma. And grandma. And dad. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's it's not the the – Look, we want them to view your stuff too, but at the same time, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. When, when this is posted, it goes to a certain clientele that it's the clientele you're looking for, right? It's the clientele you want to see. And had you not, had they not participated or had not made the connection with you, you know, they may not, these people will not see their film. It's just how it works. It just, it is what it is. It's not going to get in front of the right eyes that you need it to get in front of in order to get where you want to go. Well, recruiting is gone, and, and, you know, whether people like it or not, if you're in a super high end, like really, really high end, unless you want, you know, to be on our promo program because you want to be the number one player in the country, okay, which I could serve that purpose. But if you're the, a guy who's really a slam dunk, you're, you're not going to need that program. Right. Okay? 
Unless, like I said, we had a couple of kids that wanted to be the number one player in the right. country. Right. Unless you're trying to leverage it for something else. Something right? else. Okay. NIL. Right. You can leverage it for NIL. Like there, so That's right. there are other ways to leverage it, which we really haven't tapped. Me and Mike right. have not tapped at like, does this promotion, if you're a top tier kid, help you get right. more NIL deals? Does uh, a, a year long of a thousand dollars end up getting you ten thousand from you know down because you, know, you get more, right? That, that's something we we have to explore more that potentially. But those, as far as recruiting wise, those guys, um, are going to get recruited to a certain level unless they're in some level of obscurity for whatever reason. Those top tier guys, but then there's. FCS to group of five, what I call, right? And even lower power five. Lower, not meaning lower level, lower meaning they haven't, maybe not as prominent a program. I'm not going to name names, but maybe not as prominent a program, but still playing in a power five conference. Those players, which is like every year, I don't know, between all the grade levels, what are we talking 12 to 15,000 guys at least, you know, that are each between each grade level. Um, those guys really have to work to get their name out there because of those 12 to 15 that maybe they get the scholarships in each one of those classes, or like maybe like it's like three or four thousand each class. Um, of those guys, it's probably about a hundred thousand players that are all within range of each other of those 12,000. And I don't know if that makes a ton of sense. That's what I was trying to like, kind of figure out the best way to say it, but there's a pool of a hundred thousand players fighting for the FCS, lower FBS, lower, I mean, a uh, uh, group of five, lower power five conference schools, right? A hundred thousand players. And let's say there's 12,000 or 15,000 spots between each class, freshman, sophomore, junior, all of them together. They're all pretty close. People don't realize that. The top, top tier, which was identified when, when the NFL started um, focusing on flag football a lot, the big push for flag football, their philosophy, I read this, um, Troy Vincent put this out there. He's the he's the number two guy to um, uh, Goodell, said the 3,000 guys that we need each year to be – NFL players, those people are different guys. Those guys are going to always be out there. It's the rest of the people that they want to really, they're, they're worried about enjoying the football. Now, whether I agree with that or not, I don't, I, I actually disagree with that statement because if you don't have a large pool here, eventually this pool here is less. And I use boxing as the example, right? Boxing was a huge sport, you know, Joe Lewis. I mean, we weren't alive, but, you know, I've read all the books. Joe Lewis, uh, uh, um, Max Schmeling, uh, uh, Jersey Joe Walcott, all these heavyweights were – there was a large pool. Boxing was a way out for lots of people because a lot of people didn't have corporate jobs back then. A lot of people were working-class people. There's still a lot of working-class people, but there's, mu there's a rise of white-collar jobs, right? So larger pool, boxing, you get lots of – Guys that are pretty good, you know. Joe Lewis maybe was at the is, was at the top, you know. Rocky Marciano after him, but there was a lot of guys. All those fights were battles. Now let's look at boxing. Now, Oof. I first of all, heavyweights. Does anyone even know who they were? The two big guys from Russia. Oh. They lasted forever at the top, right? The last time there was really a lot of heavyweights was when you know eighties and nineties, a decent time period. And really, it was because when was the last time people were talking about boxing being, you know what I mean? Like when, you know, UFC has kind of like come in and kind of done that and created like a Dana White's got a nice little business model. He's also kind of like a no nonsense down, like, you know, he's a different type of CEO, I want to say, right? Like, you know, so yep. he, he, he presents things a certain way. He was one of those guys that during COVID kind of tried to like, hey, I can take advantage of something here and like, all right, let's just put all these dudes on an island and like go from there and figure something out. Whereas, you know, the boxing world has just continued to kind of like, you know, the whole it, it's it's so violent now with more concussion stuff coming out of like who would want to do this and that there's just been other ways for those guys that now used to look at that as a way of survival 
now if that that there's other ways out there's other avenues i don't have to box to get out right so i feel like that kind of hurt a little bit but at the same time you're looking at the same exact thing if that doesn't if there's no now pool right so if we were continue just the way football looked like it way it was going when when the concussion stuff started to come out and people were starting to go away from it or it's a violent sport and we need to do something else so we started to kind of change it and whatnot you know those are the things that ha that had to happen in order for it to continue so it's it's comparable Right. And, and, and I'm not saying it's going to go on the extreme level because football is obviously much more popular in boxing. But I, but when you talk about the pool of players, why why is Mayweather last and my Mayweather and Pacquiao last so long without anyone close to them? Right. Like because there just isn't enough of a pool of guys to get other guys to the top at that level. Right. So right. when someone gets to the top, they stay there because there isn't that many people to knock them off the cliff. And so, and, and UFC is a great example who's increased by marketing, increased their pool of people. Tons. Their pool was very tiny in the beginning. Right. And they yeah, actually looked at it as kind of their pool. It, it's like a gimmick, right? It was like a, oh, well, it's not wrestling, but it's not boxing, but it's not this, right? It's kind of, people were trying to feel it out. And then when they realized kind of like what it was, oh, okay, this could be something that we enjoy, right? Also, you know, you don't, I don't know. Boxing, it's like, hey, you have a big match, right? And then you got to wait, what, a year, two years for, like, another big one to come about? You know what I mean? There just – there wasn't enough – you know, football's every Sunday, you know? Like, you're getting something every Sunday where boxing, you got to wait a longer time where, you know – so now each one of those big time fights needs to be just that. It needs to it needs to be a Super Bowl like atmosphere in order to create any type of revenue or any type of anything. I just think it's too much for what this, you know, we live in an immediate society, right? Like we want things now. We don't want to wait a year for the next fight. Look at how many years they've waited for Mayweather Pacquiao to actually happen. And then when it did happen, it was kind of like, well, pa is Pacquiao still who he was? Is this guy still who he was? You know what I mean? It, it happened six years later. That it right. And and so coming, circling all the way back to the D1 promo on this, if you have a pool of players that are fighting for a certain number of spots and everybody has a certain range they're in, promotion makes a big difference because – if everybody's pretty close and what we find out about one, but we don't know about the other, what are you going to do to separate yourself? And this is what could be that separation. That's that's correct. And, and, and um, I, I mean, I'm so excited about it because it's worked really for, I mean, if you like, you, uh, we talk all about a process, the process, but in, in this case, you want to know, does the end result actually happen? And the end result has. So it, it, it's a, it's a huge difference. And, um, but yeah, I mean, you know, football, which is coming around in the next few weeks, which is su like I'm super jazzed up. Uh, college football in the next what three weeks? Oh, uh, wow. high school same time, right? Yep, twenty fifth around August, and then three weeks from like basically Friday, right? Uh, we're talking, and then um, uh, then we got obviously the NFL started last night. Uh, I've already, I've already had to see clips of Travis Wilson, uh, tripping and, uh, I mean, boy, this, this guy, I can't get, it, was he not, well, tell, you watched, I didn't watch the game. You, I, I remember. Watched, I I, and I watched specifically that play where third and two, he makes a great move to like, get out of it. Right. Like it looks like, oh, cool. First down and, and the dude slips. Like, it's like, he can't get the break. You're like this poor dude, right? Like all he, everybody's he, talking about is how he's like such a bust, and now like he's just got a whatever and play behind Rod. I mean, for him, not bad being a backup, making that kind of money, right? If but if you're a competitor, now you know I you still have that fire. You also, I, you know, what do you do? Do I just? I mean, you take it because you're getting paid whatever you're getting paid, but you're still looked at as like that bust, right? And now you're sitting behind, you know probably a hall of famer i guess you just sit there soak it up and kind of go with it you know I, I don't really know how you approach it as a competitor i'm pissed as an as a businessman i'm probably not as pissed i'm probably satisfied with collecting my checks sitting in the back there and then learning i don't know it's it's a really weird hard situation I, you know you kind of feel bad for them but at the same time like get better
Well, it, uh, who is better, um, Tim Boyle or Trav- uh, uh Wilson? Bo- uh, Boyle, I like just because he's like steady Eddie, but he's steady Eddie, yeah. You know, he's always he's never going to be the two because they're the other guy too much money. No, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just curious who was who looked better. I mean, uh, Wilson has a a um, cannon. Yeah, I mean, he, he's got a cannon. He's just he. It, you know, look, in the old days, those guys sat for – I mean, Aaron Rodgers sat for five years, right, four or five years. Steve Young sat for a long time behind Montana. That. Majority of those guys sat because it was, hey, this is an investment, right? Like this isn't – you know, we're down the road. We got to get this guy prepared. We're not just going to throw him to the world. You know, Peyton Manning was one of the very few guys that came in and started from day one and just – I mean, I don't know even how many games he won the first season. Not a lot. No, I'm, cu- I'm curious. Did Elway start right away, uh, too? Oh, uh, he might have because he was like, I'm not going here. If not, if I don't yeah, go I remember here, that. Baseball, right? Like, he kind of leveraged. I feel like it. he was one of the first guys to say, I'm not doing, you, you, you know. Like, no, uh uh-uh. uh. Like, I'm not going there. If, if, you're, if I'm going to get drafted there or whatever, then I'll play baseball. So he didn't start. Uh, let's see. LA joined one of the most highly talented. Uh, blah, 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 blah. He was local. Craig Morton retired in 82. So he was the backup. He's basically backup split, split time early on. Even he didn't start right away. He played, though. He did play. There's something but- to I, I, I like playing, and my whole thing is I look at it too. Like you know, I personally don't. I feel like look in some way, shape, or form, your backup quarterback's gonna have to win you at least one game during the season. Yeah, Just no the way doubt. the NFL works, you know. Like, well, I, I typed in Joe Joe Montana. I, I well, actually first I typed in Montana. I just saw a beautiful picture of Montana, which is where I'd rather be right now. But um. Yeah, it looks a little. It looks a lot nicer than, than Jersey. I'll tell you that. I mean, it, although it's been nice out this week. Gorgeous, gorgeous. gorgeous. These, these guys are spoiled. If you're if you're in camp in the weather that happened this week, that's nice. Now last week with some humidity, no, no. Montana, did he start right away? Montana did not start right away. I I was just curious. It, it, a year, a year and a half, and he became the start. I, I I'm just curious. In the old days, like, like, I'm sure Johnny United started right away because it probably started right away because it probably wasn't anybody else. <laughs> you know, some of those guys in the early, early years, right? But, but like when it started to get a, a multitude of quarterbacks, I feel like, I feel like a lot of guys, you know, that 70s, 80s, maybe. uh Maybe the nineties have probably started to change, is my guess. Yeah, like Troy Aikman, he did did he sit? I don't think Troy Aikman's Troy, that's a good question. Troy Aikman. I know he I think like you know, I know he struggled when he came in. Troy Aikman. Troy Aikman. Okay, here we go. Troy Aikman was eighty nine. It looks like he Played right away. Right. He, uh, his, his, the, have you ever seen the, I don't know what it is with a thing on Troy Aikman, but like covers his, I don't know if it's an NFL thing or, or what, what I've seen that like on TikTok, but it was talking about, so when he was at Oklahoma and he was the starter at Oklahoma, he, um, let me get this right. So when he was a starter at Oklahoma, they I don't remember what they went to. They went to a bowl game or whatever. He did really well. Um, and then he got I want to say he got hurt. And the guy who took took his place was Jamel Holloway. That's your guy. Yep. I I, I just happened to see other because I knew he came in and I knew he was playing, but I didn't know what ha- I didn't know what happened. He got hurt. And Jamel Holly went in and they won the national championship. That's what it was. And and that was with who? Switzer? That was with Switzer. Troy Aikman was running a triple option, but they were throwing a, a decent amount with him because he could obviously throw. Right. And Switzer called up 
um, in the offseason, called up uh, the UCLA head coach and said, I have a guy and he's a star. And, and, and he was skeptical because he said most of the time when people call him up, like, well, back then for a transfer, it's like it's a headache. It's uh, they're just, you know, they're, they're lying because they just want to get rid of this guy. You know, they're not telling the truth. But he said, I'm telling you, this guy is a first uh, a first round draft pick. He's just, you know, we're running a triple option. And right. he's we have a guy that's, you know, Jamel Holloway, who basically became the greatest one of the when people think about the greatest triple option quarterbacks of all time. He is probably on the Mount Rushmore of triple yes, option quarterbacks. You probably don't know who he is because it was you probably were a baby or you weren't even born yet. I caught him at the end. Maybe at the end you were, but he was like of his highlights. It it's it's like he makes one in the triple option. He makes it, people want to do it. Well, no, you, you he makes know. people want to choose that offense rather than have to be forced into it because of personnel. He makes it look so easy. He makes it look easy, dude. Like well, that, too, that too. That's a problem because then when people go to run it, they're like, oh, we could run it because this guy does it. And you're like, no, bro. Like, no, you don't have this guy. You don't have this kind of guy. <laughs> this guy. I wish I could. Have I ever brought up clips? Let me see if I can. I don't even know how to spell it. I would be curious to see. Like, I wonder what Michael Vick would have done in a triple option. This is o offense, you know? Because he was just so fast, but he was a different type of fast, you know. I wonder if you... that would have been. Uh, I got. I got. I got. I got. We got, we got, also, we got. It would also be interesting to see some of those programs that used to do that stuff. I, if they still did it, you know, that would be yeah. interesting. Yeah, that right. And could I, those teams? And then could those teams still compete with who they compete with doing that? Can you see? Let's see if you can see this. Let's see. Yeah, you could see it. There you go. All right, let's watch Jamel. Look at those tearaways. Oh, uh, tearaways are great. They they were awesome. Tearaways and everything's astroturf. That hurts so bad. Let's see. Uh, uh, I want to see. I want to see highlights of Jamel. I mean, look at the feet. <laughs> Oh, he's just so fast. Oh, my God. Strong. Yeah. He's not big, but I think he's like 5'9", maybe 5'10". Oh, that was the boss. It, you, know like, hey, you know who that is? Guess who, who he's throwing to there? That guy? Yeah. That's um he's a Hall of Famer. Uh tight end used to play for the Eagles. Um caught a million balls. Oh uh see Matt, look at him throw. Like imagine him running zone read. I mean he has an arm. But that's, it, that's but, what I'm saying. Imagine him, you like, you know, he didn't he uh, couldn't well, he wasn't like, hey, I'm just a runner. What's amazing is he like he holds the ball in one hand half the time. It's amazing how athletic he is. Like just freakishly, freakishly athletic, freakishly quick, you know. Heisman winner or no? I think he was a uh, a finalist. Oh, one of the years, I think his senior year he might have gotten hurt. Oh, you know in that offense, you know. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he obviously didn't. Charles get Thompson took his place. Look at that. Look at him. Oh man, look at him go. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah, he's little. He's little. He's moving though. Look, he's holding one hand. He must He's have like big hands. There's a little throw. Okay, buddy. I can't believe I can't. Remember. Oh, Keith Jackson. That's it. The tight end. Oh, I got you. So, you know, Keith Jackson was like a three-time All-American or something. Right. But guess how many catches Keith Jackson would have in a year? It'd be yeah, like here. 10, you know, like 10, 11. 15, yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, wow. We're getting up in the big numbers now. How good do you have to be? Like, imagine so, like you take a quarterback like him, put him in the backfield, and now you're running like all your zone reads with all your RPOs. Like, really? The only only analogy watching him run that he will does remind me of is like a Kyler Murray kind right. of deal. 
Yeah. You know, like I, I guess Kyler Murray was he's tiny back. like that. It moves. He always has the ball in one hand. You know, yeah. Ky, you know, Kyler would have it in Run one hand. A little bit, right? Like when he's scrambling, he don't tuck it. He just kind of leaves it out there, kind of letting it go. It just shows you the evolution of the game, though. You know what I mean? Because now most guys nowadays are telling this guy, go play receiver. Well, yeah, well, because – well, if he – he throws a good ball, though. Phenomenal. Yeah, no, you're right. They, well, they are well, – or, or maybe he's a running uh, – maybe a, a, like a, a slot or a running back. And, and actually, the truth is in today's offense is probably that's where he should be, you know? So – yeah, that guy in the slot that can run jet sweep, that can catch those quick passes, right? Get the ball in his hands and kind of wiggle and make moves and go, right? Like, be an athlete. I think he, you know, someone like him had no chance of being a pro back then because... Back then, not well, not at the quarterback spot, right? Like, they would have firmly made him change positions. And I don't think... I think he was probably an option quarterback his whole life. And I bet you... All of the whole time. That was... To go to running back would have been hard, and the slots weren't a big deal back then. He didn't do anything. So I today's game, he would be like a, a Wesley Walker, a, a Tyreek Hill. Um, well, Tyreek plays all over, but because he's so fast. But like um, an Edelman, like he move, can move around, slot. You know, even like Devonta Smith from from Bama a couple years ago, a little guy, right? Like he can do what that guy does. Yeah. And just bounce all over the place but offenses weren't geared like that like you use the tight end more than you use the slot receiver yep yep no you're right it was like a tight end i think there was one it was a flanker probably i bet you what 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 what, what did they do was it a flanker or was it a, maybe it was a true x i guess sometimes no, well, I, mean, I, I feel like they were double tight end and were they double were they double tight end they must have been double tight end i think or, everybody right or maybe they were – or maybe I heard that's your new offense. What's that? I heard that's your new offense. Too tight. <laughs> well, it's default, my offense. Yeah, too tight. Oh, but like, think about that, right? Like, if you – first off, you rarely saw, saw somebody in, like, four wide or three wide receivers, right? And then if it was, you just took, like, a tight end and put him out there in the slot. Or you took, like, your fullback and you put him yeah. out there just kind of lined them up and was like hey they weren't really doing anything but now you look at it like that guy's pivotal and like most sets are 10 personnel so you're talking about working with an entire different you know i'm sure there's a lot of guys that go back and said man if i would have played today i would have been this or i wouldn't have played because that position doesn't exist anymore you know well the running backs are uh very upset not yeah. very happy human beings I saw another thing where a guy was like, uh, oh, I know what it was. It was Ingram. I saw a video by Ingram. Ingram said, In Ingram's no longer in the league, right? No. Are you talking Mark Ingram? Like, yeah. like Bama? Yeah, yeah. Like Heisman winner? Yeah. Yeah, no. he's. Not, I don't think he's in the league anymore. He said. He said he's probably salty as hell, too, because he, he was like bounced out before probably he felt he should have been. Well, he said that he um, felt that. He said he's gonna encourage his son to play a different like quarterback or a different position or uh receiver or DB. Crazy, bro, just go play defense and you're playing three, three defense, plays, dude. You want to play, go play defense and play three downs. Sorry, you gotta work a little harder to get the recognition. You're not scoring touchdowns. I'm sorry, but I'm pretty sure that your name still gets all over Twitter if you have an interception or you have 10 tackles in a game, you know, Play like defense. Just opportunities are are I don't have to come off look, if I play receiver, how many times are you even going to throw me the ball? Maybe maybe you're going to look my way 7 times a game, maybe, right? You're running around for the most part. 100%, you're doing stuff it, so it's whatever. Yeah, okay, I might have an opportunity to score a touchdown. That's great. You can make three tackles in three plays and you're already, you know what I mean? Like, why not? I don't know. That's just always it, – it, I agree good. with you. Defense, dude. And so, like, I, I always lobby that way. But I'm just saying, if you want to get on a field and you want to play the most football you can where you're actually a part of it, go play defense. No, it, it, it is amazing. It, you know, people look at uh, defense as like – it's it's so funny when I – like, are we gonna do uh, the little like, kids? 
are we going to do offense today? I said, yeah, we're going to do offense. I said, but most of the offense, like most of you guys are blocking, uh, you know, 10 of you are blocking, 10 of you are blocking on a play. Like on defense, you could all get to the ball, all of you. Right. And then it becomes like a competition. Like, I'm going to beat you. Like, I'm going to beat you. I'm going to beat you. Like, so it's just like, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't understand it. I love when I get the look like, man, you should play defense. And then you get that look. You're like, you get that look like, well, I want to play offense. It's the same reason when we do any of our showcases or anything. When we go one on ones, there's 450 receivers and there's 100 DBs. It's like, dude, like, you want to get a scholarship? Go do that, even half of the half of whatever, and you'll be on the field, right? It's crazy to me. It's, also, it's, more it's, opportunities. There's only so many quarterbacks. How many quarterbacks are there? I'm pretty sure there's one, right? Like, I think there's one, yeah. There's one. Yeah. Uh, that's that kind of. I think there's one, right? Yeah. Okay. And then you know, now you look at like DB. I mean, damn. Even if you want to break it down even more, so you could play DB. That's four positions. Even if you want to say corner safety, you still have two opportunities to get on the field. Like, maximize your opportunity and then critique it from there or go from there, right? I, I don't know. I just, that's just me. If I, cause I, but I was always the guy that just wanted to play, you know? Right. I wasn't picky about, oh, it's got to be this and it's got to be that. It's got to be, I didn't care. Let's just, just get me on a field. That's all I want to do is just, let me just play, right? right. So, that I went to is the schools that I went, you know, chose the colleges that I chose because I wanted to play. I didn't want to sit around for four years, put all that work in, and then do something little. No, I wanted to participate. I wanted to go out there. I wanted to play right away. Couldn't stand sitting around. But I don't know. A lot of these guys are so up in their feels about I got to be a receiver. I got to be a quarterback. I got to be this that they just want to play that position. And kudos to them if that's the way they want to do it. But you know, when you don't get the opportunity that you expect, then know that that's why you chose that path. Yep, there's no doubt about it. Um, what else do we got going on in uh, college? Any updates on the PJ Fleck thing? I haven't seen anything come out of that, really. That kind of got hushed real quick. I didn't even see it until you said something to me about it. Now, look. You can really look at, I mean, he is the ultimate motivational type of like, I mean, he's got an acronym for every freaking thing he does, row the boats, this all kind of stuff, right? Like he really pumps that a ton. And for these guys to come out, for the people, for guys that don't know what we're talking about, PJ Fleck, the head coach uh, at Minnesota, kind of, you know, people, some of his former players have come out and said that it's, a, you know, what, like a cult like following kind of like or it's 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 the, the the mental messages and stuff are bordering on you know so, you know you know kind of bullying type of thing really yeah, kind of looks like they got rid of it mostly so right. it looks, like, looks it's, like it's not like northwestern where they had to get rid of the head coach yes no it's definitely not right and i don't think it was anything like of that nature where there was hazing or any of that type some of his guys i guess at minnesota just felt like it was the motivational stuff was so like over the top. It was bordering on a certain way. Now those guys that probably said that are probably guys that have never, that never took a snap, but I, I like, I like my feeling so, about things is usually those guys that are loud about those types of things are guys that are not happy with their playing situation. Well, Oh, that's always the case, but um, if it's you're starting, you ain't sure as hell ain't saying this is like a call. <laughs> what would their so, so they, they, it was something like, what would be their – so their slogan for 2023. It's just because he's like a very – Like I say, he's very, an acronym guy. He's always got a slogan. He's always got something, right? Like, like it's always like, you know, row the boats or, or you know, it's the same thing that Shiano does with his whole, like, chop thing. But he only has chop. That's it. This guy's got a motivational acronym for, for something, for everything. Well, he said uh, this year they're poised – uh, their 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 thing is they decided on poise, and then they they uh, we knew poise control balance in hot situations. How could we get this message home? That's where the poison band came in to play poison. We can play that yeah, like uh, anytime uh, they're in the locker room, and if they don't have poise, they'll have poison in that locker room. <laughs> Ah, they both want to listen to Poison, I guess. Uh, I mean, okay, you know, like okay, that's an '80s band. Uh, that you, there's no way you listen to that group. Poison, obvious, yeah. From you know, I, I know him from '80s movies. <laughs> oh, 
Were they any weren't they like a hardcore? Aren't they like a uh, hair are they, band? Are they like a Guns N' Roses type of like along those lines type of thing? Like these guys with long hair and stuff. They're, they're a hair band. They're that's what they are, right? Like a hair band. They're different than they're little. They were kind of like hair glam almost. Oh, like like a little like. All right, let's let, let, let's let's get let's get the education of uh uh. Metal. What are they? Were they considered metal? They were considered like that, like that hair band rock. I don't know. Uh, yeah, like that stuff was big. That yeah, that stuff was. Let's see if we can find something good on these guys. Glam, oh, glam metal. They called it. I can't believe that's glam even like metal. Unreal. I didn't. I was not really a fan, to be honest, as you would probably expect. But um, but I do know all the songs because everybody was playing that crap. Well, anybody ever probably played. Yeah, I do know them all, but it was like definitely it wasn't my thing. I can tell you that. There they are. Oh God, <laughs> they look like girls to me. That's 100%. Yeah, they look like they're in like a like a whatever Simmons workout video. A <laughs> Richard Simmons. See, I knew Richard, him. A Richard Simmons workout. Yeah, everything's like uh, you know, everybody's in like their hair is all up in the bands, and it's like they're all in like these like I don't know leotards or whatever. Looks like they're going to like a uh, a freaking gymnastics meet. <laughs> Richard Simmons. Let me see. Well, I remember Richard Simmons sweating to the oldies. Yeah, yeah sweating to the oldies, right? But like he's the only guy I knew that worked out every single day and looked exactly the same. How did he never get any improvement? How do you never have any muscles or anything like that, dude? Like, I don't How know. How is that possible? I don't know. Apparently, I just always wonder that. How does someone work out like he worked out and never, never improve physically? I guess. Richard Simmons. Here he is. I mean, also, like, you look at, like, uh, like remember, who was the other dude, too? The uh, the Ty Bo guy? Remember that was for a thing for a while? Ty Bo. Right? There so like there's, Billy there's Billy point. Blanks or something his name was right Billy Blanks there's same thing. <laughs> Bill, well, Billy kinda, Blanks though was built. That's what I'm saying. At least he kind of looked the part, right? Like, yeah, yeah. This guy's like, hey, work out, look like me. It's like, that's what I want to look like. I guess if what the alternative is, but like, still interesting. I don't know. And now we look at these college weight room programs, right? These guys go away and they come back 20 pounds heavier. And it's like, and you're like, okay, so that's what, that's how you change your body, right? Not sweating to the oldies over here. Sweating, sweating to the oldies. Wow. <laughs> Interesting. What's uh, any big first uh, weekend college matchups? Oh, uh, I think there's a couple. Um, obviously, like out of conference stuff, I think. Um, what's I saw something last night. I think it was, I think Oregon's playing somebody that they're like normally not, whatever. I don't know. I gotta look at Nebraska. I gotta see Nebraska actually, opens with Nebraska, opens with Minnesota. That should be a win for who, Nebraska or Minnesota? Nebraska, I would think. Depends on what he had to do, it depends on how much work he really had to do when he got in there. Uh, yeah, well, isn't Minnesota good though? I mean, I don't know. I just yeah, I do, there's not that many. There's not. I don't see too many big matchups. The first Florida State, somebody TCU plays Colorado. That should be good. TCU coming off of a playoff appearance, and obviously Dion's going to have a lot of. Uh, I almost like want to cry when I see these videos, dude. He's always out there in like a scooter. He's always gimping around. Like he literally has like one foot now. It's crazy. Did, he, did they have to do the surgery or no? What yeah, he had another his... surgery. If you watch some of the stuff like I've seen over the last couple of days, I like guess camp started or whatever. He's like on like a he's on like a Paul Blart scooter, <laughs> and he never has a shoe on it. Really? Yeah, like to that extent like he ain't out there like walking from drill to drill he's like riding from drill to drill really yeah it's a shame it's really like it's kind of sad that's crazy wild right you know it's uh i, I wonder if i wonder even though know, he handles things very well i wonder if the stress makes it worse for him 
like that blood clot and stuff, you know. In my eyes, in my eyes, I think stress kills every stress. You know, oh, stress every, kills. Right? It's, it's a silent like killer. You really have no idea, right? And and everybody deals with it in different ways. So I think that has a lot to do with it too. Like some guys are are. It's very easy to tell when they're stressed, and then some guys you think it's you have no clue, but on the inside, it's like they're that's why it's a silent killer, dude. Yeah. And I, you know. For as much persona as he's like, all good, whatever, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm sure he's worried about everything. Got to be stressful. It's something that's like, because it's also like a genetic thing, right? Like he didn't even know he had it until like he had it. And then he had to call his mom and be like, mom, do we have blood clots in our family? And she's like, oh yeah, your uncle and you're this and you're that. And he's like, shit. I needed to know and you're that. Doing that. And you're trying to coach football. Like, I'm not only trying to coach football, you're just trying to do something unprecedented. He, yeah, he tried to build a program, you're trying to build a program a certain way, being who you are. So you got to live up to that every day. You're trying to, your kids are part of this whole process. So to me personally, when your family's involved in something like that, like, I'm going to give it a little more juice and pay, you know what I mean? Even more so than anything else. Like, but he's also got a rep now. His brand. Did you see that he re-signed with Nike? Uh, Dion did. Yeah, so they're bringing back like his old school like turf shoes and stuff. Oh, bump. Wow, <laughs> Bruce out Mar- of that stuff, right? Like, wow, it's interesting. Bruce, you know who Bruce Feldman is Bruce you know, Feldman Porter. Like, yeah, he said that he he. He thinks that Dion's gone by 2024, meaning if if it goes really well, he's out. If it goes really bad, he's out. So that he he he, he I, thinks that. No offense, the foot is a great. It's a great what? Like if it don't go good, it's a great. Oh, uh, like oh, my no. tape. Not that he's that person. No, but, but you know what? You might say it's not worth it if it's not going well. Not if going it's going well, like, well you'll stick it out. Like, look, I don't need to do this. I tried something. My health's more important. Or then it can always be like, hey, if we, we could have, if I would have been healthy or something like that, right? But then if it goes good, it's also the same thing. Like, hey, this is going great. I'm going to leave it this way. I got to go because my health's more important. Well, I would. Th- well, he was saying that, like, if he does really well, he's moving on to another place. You think? I that- you don't. You don't think so. You think that. You think that his helps. He'll. He'll do this as long as he can, and then if that's just it. I think he's. Yes, because I think this move in itself has been more than he was expecting. Like, I mean, I'm sure he expected whatever, but you can never really predict types. And this is at Colorado. Now he's what going to go do it again and go to what like Florida State? I don't know, dude. I don't know if like. To, and personally, I think his health. And being around with his family is more important than even jeopardizing that in the slightest. As it is, they're already talking like, hey, we got to take your foot. Like, that's the next phase of this. Oh, he's seven years older than me. So he's so De- De- he's not 50, young. He's 56. 56? Yeah. That ain't, uh, look, it's young, but it's not young. Well, to be out in the football field. Right, over, like over. like Nick Saban's had how many hip surgeries or this or that, you know, like Kirby Smart. Like, he, oh, I didn't even know he, d- he does. Oh, yeah, I believe I believe Saban's had hip stuff already. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, but that's another thing. Like, do you, you people don't think about a coach's health? I love how you know all this stuff. You're right. He got, re- he did have hip surgery. Dude. You're a good reader. He he yeah he did have uh hip surgery. Like, I also like that to me, I pay attention to that stuff because like when he's off life of a college coach never stops. It's, it's three sixty five. it's seven days a week. So, you know, when did Nick Saban, you, you know, he, he, when did he have time to take off to get his hip done? Right. Like you got to, well, it's the same day deal. So he went in, they did right, it and whatever. And I'm sure the second he came out of surgery, he was like, like, are you coming to Bama? Are you coming to Bama? Are you like, coming to Bama? I just had surgery, where, and I'm, I'm tweeting or I'm texting you from my hospital bed. That's how bad I want you to come to Bama. Group text with yeah. coaches. His make wife, sure you now. Mr. Terry's sure. probably pissed. Like, 
get off the damn phone, Nick. Like, we need to heal here. And he's like, no, 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 no. This guy's a five star. I got to get him in the building. <laughs> he's going to Georgia tomorrow. I got to make sure he's coming. He's on a group text with his staff. Make I sure also saw another thing. You remember? Or send the letter to so and so. Right. What? Remember the wrestler Bill Goldberg? Yeah, 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 yeah. Ball dude, whatever. Mm-hmm. Bama just offered his kid uh, a preferred walk on spot as a receiver. Okay. Just to keep him from going to Georgia is like how they're spinning it. <laughs> like, there's no way this kid's ever going to play at Bama. He literally looks like a 5 8 wide receiver. But I mean, obviously, he's Bill Goldberg's kid. He's yoked, but he put it together. But he, uh, I guess, yeah, I guess Bama offered him a PWO just to keep him away from Georgia or something. How Why is he where he went, Georgia or something? I guess he was like, yeah, I guess like he's just like, you know, just like one of those things like, hey, he could help, but like you never know. So like, let's just keep him from there. And it said like, Saban's done this in the past. So I was like, okay. Well, it looks he, like he's as tall as his, it looks like he's as tall as his dad. I don't, I don't think know. Goldberg was very tall. I don't wasn't he a Gage Goldberg, a lineber- linebacker prospect, given an opportunity as a preferred walk-on? Gage Goldberg. I like to watch his highlight tapes. Let's see. Yeah, and listen, I'm you, sure. Know, you, know, you know I'm on it already right now. I got to see how good he is. I saw it the other day. I loved it. I'm like, oh, he's six feet 205, piece in size. Here he is in pictures with Nick Saban. Yeah. He, is really not that big. No, I told you he's like the same size as that. He ain't six. It says he's six feet. Yeah, I told you. Man, I don't know. Why. Okay, no way. That's one of those in fleet. <laughs> he's six feet. He's, he's six feet and so are you. Then so you're six feet there. Yeah, I'm six, six five. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's then great. you're six five. If I, yeah, if I was coming out now, I'd be like, I'd be like, I'm six four. People, they'd be like, I'd be they'd six. Beat me no doubt. I mean, they, what your guy from uh, with Coach Jackson from uh, uh, West Virginia said about these guys with height? And he laughs. He's like, now he goes great. Now I'm walking a guy who told me he was six two. He's not even six foot, and I got to walk him into Coach Brown's office, and I just wasted ten minutes. And he's like, now he's pissed. Like, like please give me it's your not a right bad play because I'm gonna figure it out eventually, and we're only wasted everybody's time, you know. He's he's not fast, um, Goldberg's kid. He is aggressive. You would, I mean, <laughs> I'm watching it. Gets I mean, his dad's move was like the spear, right? Like, didn't he? Like, I, I don't know. I thought it was like a charge type of whatever move. I don't. Sometimes he's I think these guys get offers just because, or they're just on the scene because of like you know. Well, he I, after watching his film, I could safely say that he is a. Preferred walk on. Well, he's preferred because Nick Saban's no dummy. That's why. Is Nick Saban's like, well, Goldberg's going to be a part of the program now. Right. He's know. also, okay. So now I just got every wrestling fan or whatever come over. And then, you know, I also don't have to worry about this kid, whatever, because he's got NIL, obviously. <laughs> he's got his own NIL. I, w- I wonder. Yeah. Uh, now, so to me, now that's something that is interesting, right? With NIL, think about it. So a guy like that, obviously people are going to throw money at him because of who he is. He's Bill Goldberg's kid. Oh, yeah, he, he may get it. He yeah. may not step foot on the field and be a player, but now he's in the locker room making all this NIL money, and the dudes that are actually playing aren't making anything. How does, like, what does that do, right? Like, do you guys not even care? Because it's like, whatever, dude, you don't even play. Or it's, well, that's bullshit. I play and I still don't make money. What's so funny is how people get this wrong. One one news outlet that reports he gets an offer from uh, a scholarship offer from Alabama. That's not true. Nope. It's a preferred walk on. See, people don't know that. See, right? They, you know, it's so funny how like the we, whole we, how you can skew, dude. Smoke and mirrors. It's crazy. You can make yourself a way better player than you are. By just like, and that's going to Georgia. That's why I think when Coach Jackson was saying, I'll talk to whoever, right? Like high school coach, seven on seven coach, trainer, 
I'll talk to all these guys because if I'm going to offer you a scholarship, then I want to know who you are around the whole thing. Don't just, I just don't need your handler telling me how good you are. I know that part. Absolutely. Uh, well, hot water heaters, they can be a problem. Oh, yeah, Coach uh, Coach Holman, he just te- he just texted me again, apologizing, and uh, he had a hot water issue, so he's, my basement's flooded. I said, well, that's going to be rough since camp starts on Monday, buddy. Is it so, raining up there? Or? By me? Is it raining by you or no? Yeah, it's starting to drizzle. Temperature's been nice, though. Are you uh, – you got any plans to head up to Jets camp? Next – uh, may, maybe next week, like Friday or Saturday. Uh, this, this, today we're gonna go till Sunday. Go up to well, Ghana. I don't know. I don't know what the weather's like, but we're gonna go to Lake George for a couple of days, like awesome. Saratoga. Saratoga. Yeah. So jealous. You know, stay in a hotel and um. The Sagamore. Nah, I've, I've messed with you. Know, I've, I've, I've stayed there. I've stayed yeah, there, but. It's so hard to get in the summer. With you can't get. It's too expensive for what you're getting. Unless I just you, love Lake George, bro. Yeah, Sag. I, we stayed in the Sagamore when Troy was. I remember. And we we got a great rate because it was, it was, it was the year we were. Year you weren't coaching. Twenty one. No. So I think you were able to go Before later. Before that. It was the year COVID year, maybe. It was the year I didn't coach. It might have been it, Troy was a baby. It was oh. the year. I, it was when we had Troy. So the first I remember, year I, didn't coach. I remember you going there, and I'm like, "Oh, you're at Lake George. Like Lake George is the best." Because my uncle's farm's 20 minutes from there. You know, my cousin has a boat. My cousin has a boat. Right, we did stay there twice. Yeah. The second time was like a um, – it was maybe after, right, um, we weren't coaching. But the first time I went was when he was first born. I didn't, I didn't coach that year. And we got a great rate because, you know, when we went after the season, the yeah. September, like, like <laughs> after Labor Day – he, the most amazing time. People don't understand, like, it's and, and being down here when all the North Jersey people go, go back, right? And it's yep. first Labor Day. Like, that 21 season where we didn't coach and we kind of just, like, floated around. Man, I'm telling you, like, to have an August and September, there's nothing like it. it it's phenomenal, especially after being in it forever and just kind of like, okay, here comes August, here comes camp, here comes, you know, the same yep. dog and pony show, the same routine. That most underrated time, I think, in the Northeast is that September, September first week in October. Because, look, the water's still warm, right? Like, I can still go out on the Wave Runner in late September and the water still be 70 degrees. The first frost hasn't hit yet. Like, you're still out there. There's no traffic. Nobody's doing anything. Every All the prices and stuff have come back down because now the summer push is out. It's just great. Like, going up to see a game at at, uh, at Army, Missy Stadium, oh, right on the water. Nothing Mikey like Stadium. that. Great place to see a game, atmosphere-wise. Phenomenal. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and go some games this year if I can. Well, think about it. You have a nice little crew Alex. too, right? Like you can now. Hey, Troy, what friend do you want? Or you know, another dad that maybe you work with or something like that. The four of you can go and kind of whatever. Or take Nicole. She's a ride or die. She's good like that. That's not. That's a good. That's an awesome experience to go to some of those games. <clears throat> I mean, you can go to any Rutgers game you want for free, pretty much. So <laughs> they, you yeah. know, they. I, I bet you I could go to any uh, West Point game. Yeah, just call and ask. Yeah, hey, listen, we're uh, we have the we have a, a club uh, that's. I I wonder how they um, like they have to now, even though have to cater to those club teams. Yeah, like hey, I'm the board B seven oh seven club, and right, like hey, know. I got a couple guys that I'd like to bring to a game, like what? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, they it's, must so and so from whatever schmo high school, and I got Billy Taylor, who's you know thinking about going. Our, okay, sure, come on. I'm trying to think, like, I we should – actually, it's something we should probably talk to – send out to our guys if there's uh, – if you're interested in going to – well, they could probably just do it through their high school, though. 
but good. But if those guys aren't talking about it or taking advantage of it, yeah, 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 yeah. High yeah. school are worried. High school coaches are worried about. I got to win next week, not hey, I got to get you to army on Saturday. Now those guys may call like so. We do it all. We see it all the time, right? Hey, so and so won't make Saturday film session because he's going here or he's going here. That's what Saturdays are for. That's why high school football is supposed to be played on Friday night. So that Saturday you can now go and visit whatever school wants you to be there. That's how it was posed to me. You guys have to get yourself a uh, Murray for your staff. What do we need? Unless you already have. You need like a Brian. You know how Brian Murray helps. Was uh, Nikki oh, was saying DFO. that. Yeah, DFO behind the scenes. He actually hit me up yesterday. It was pretty funny. Oh, really? Yeah. He's like, heard you got some two new. Heard you got some nice two. Uh, heard you got two looking, uh, two freshmen that look pretty good. I'm like, look, buddy. Settle down, dude. Yeah, he was messing with me. He's like, keep those boys in house. I said, come on, dude. Like, really? Stay, stay above the bridge, bro. Like, we're good. But, you know, he's just funny. But, hey, I get it. Plus, they're coming down here to scrimmage. Why not? Take a shot. <laughs> Are they uh, – who are they scrimmaging? Here? We're scrimmaging. We're scrimmaging them. DePaul? Yeah, our, we have a quad. It's us, DePaul, St. Augustine, and St. Thomas Aquinas. When is that? That is our first one. So it's the 13th, 15th, something like that. It's our first scrimmage quad. So I'm going to come watch. Oh, yeah. It should be a goodie. Is it at night or in the morning? Uh, I think we're going in the morning because it's our first one. And then from we only have one scrimmage. And then we're doing a game scrimmage against Manalapin. And then game. I, so. I like that. That's a good way to do it. Yeah. All right, let's wrap it up. With let's that up. of a scrimmage, yeah, we're good. All right, man. Good talk. Good chat. I'll, I'll Always. See. Topics see out there, too.